Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by Eva Hussein, Polaren's director and founder, and we're having a good look at the National Archives for the UK. Welcome, Eva. Thank you um, so much, Stephanie. So today we're covering uh, the National Archives of, of the UK. Um, they have a very comprehensive website, but I must warn you that it's not easy to use or to find information. So um, it's very, very comprehensive and it has a lot of resources, including blogs and videos, uh, workshops, but it's just for my liking, a little bit clunky to use. Uh, in any case, I will take you through firstly what the archives um, do, what you can find there, and also we'll do like a mock little search for somebody's records and I'll show you um, that in a moment. So firstly, uh, what are the National Archives um, of the UK? Um, so it is a government institution, but it, it is a non-ministerial department, as the website says. Um, and it's the official archive and publisher for the UK government and for England and Wales. Um, and they say that they are the guardian of um, a thousand years of iconic national documents. And it's true, they do have a lot of documentation. As you can see, this is how uh, things are housed uh, and some are digitalized, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so it's a heritage institution, essentially. Uh, if you want to explore this a little bit more in terms of, you know, legislation, the history, um, uh, you know, legislation in terms of what governs um, the work of the archives in terms of privacy and things like that, it, all, all that information is there, they have plans, policies, um, and also uh, rules around how documents are uh, released. So here, for example, they're talking about the 20 year rule and um, what sort of information you can get and who can get it and how. Um, so um, all of that information is available and you can have a look in your own time. Uh, I also wanted to show you um, their blog because it's like full of really amazing information, truly. Um, they uh, do hold events at the, at the moment, um, workshops and um, any activities that are non-essential uh, are not really um, presented by the archives, but there's lots of things happening online. Um, so if you're interested um, in exploring this particular archive further, um, there are, apart from, you know, recorded sessions, there are some workshops and events that are happening online, which you can access through here. There's many articles, many videos uh, explaining um, what they do and how to go about uh, requesting records. Uh, and there's also a newsletter and it, it's a great thing to sign up to because about once a month you receive information about events and any interesting activities uh, that they might be holding. Um, so in here, and we can't play them because of copyrights, but there are uh, videos and uh, recordings of workshops and um, um, lots of very, very interesting uh, information that they've gathered, they've put together. Um, there's like dozens and dozens of things that um, you can listen to. There are podcasts, there are workshops, um, Zoom calls and all of that. Um, and they're really well structured actually. And they explain step, step by step, um, um, you know, history of, let's say, you know, in this instance, how birth, marriage and death certificates began being registered in England and Wales. So although that was recorded more than a year, you know, a year ago, it's still very pertinent. So uh, I'd encourage you to, um, you know, just have a go and have a look uh, at podcast videos and all of that if you're really interested in exploring uh, this archives, this archive, uh, and we've shown you that already. So on that note, um, I am um, just going to have a go at finding someone's records and just showing you what you can find. Um, National Archives of the UK are pretty comprehensive and they do have a lot of um, documentation um, dating back, you know, centuries, if not a thousand years, as they've said. Um, and you can find information about your family. So. What I did is just type in a pretty common name, Goldberg, into the search box just here. Um, so you can search the catalog uh, and also online connection, collection. Um, so what did I find? So there are many, many records because it's a very common name. So, um, and that's why I did them. So there's over 2000 results of, of what I've typed, but you can, of course, um, 
fine tune it. Um, and here you have, you know, if you wanted just to see things that you can download, there's only 256. So about 10% of the um, resources for this particular surname have been uh, digitalized. And that's in the National Archives, but they also point you to other archives. Um, and over here, you can also limit the date um, that the research is carried. So they start from 1300. So like you can go back 700 years. Um, it's probably, you know, unless your family was noble or really well known for something, or, you know, you, you come from line of kings or princes, probably not likely that you're going to find something. But maybe if your family were, I don't know, landowners or something like that, you might be able to find something. But um, the closer we get to today, the more of a chance that we do. So over here, we can actually refine it by date. Um, so firstly, we can just say, let's say from these three dates, um, we'll click them and we refine them. <laughs> but let's say we have a look at uh, Ernst Goldberg's medal. What did he get his medal for? Let's have a look. So what did he get? So um, the National Archives in Kew, which is where uh, records are housed, mm -hmm. has got a record of a war medal for Ernst Goldberg. Um, and the date range is between 1914 and 1920. Uh, and you can order this um, uh, and you can sign in and get it for free, apparently. Uh, or at the moment, it costs you £3.50. Uh, but you can preview this image. So let me show you. You'll have a watermark, um, but you can see if that's something that's of interest to you. Um, so mm -hmm. it's just loading. It's a bit slow. Uh, but you can see it here at the bottom uh, as well. Uh, and you get, like, like I said, you can purchase and you can also um, get a particular resolution of your record or you can rate it whether it's good or bad or ugly or whatever. Okay, so I can't, yeah, so they've, they've oh, yeah. ah, okay. So you can, you can, hey, here you go. So you can see bits of it. It's got a watermark, mm -hmm. but like if there's something of interest to you, you can order this, yeah? Uh, okay, let's have a look what else we've got. So these are military uh, records, medals. Uh, okay, we have a Russian Israel Goldberg. Let's have a look what he can tell us. Uh -huh. All right, so again, National Archives in Kew, um, born in 1909. Um, and it's a publicly available record. And let's have a look at the image. Okay, now this one's a lot more interesting because as you can see, you've got photos. Look at that. Ooh, you can I see at it. the bottom, yeah. Um, so that's quite, um, yeah. So he's listed as previous nationality Russian, uh, but there's a lot of records, there's uh, 12 pages. Um, and if you um, make it bigger, you can actually read it. And if it's of interest, you can order. Um, what we do for our work um, here, Stephanie, mostly, is we find naturalization records. Um, so this website can tell you when, if and when somebody is naturalized. Yeah. Um, and that's what we need for our citizenship cases. Uh, for many of the nationalities that we work with. So the process would be to search this website. If we know, if we can find someone, um, someone's naturalization records, then we request them because we do need to receive them in hard copy with a post deal. And um, there's quite, quite a few uh, technical things we need to do around um, that. <laughs> but if your family ever immigrated to the UK, it's very likely that their records will be there. Or even if they stay there as, as residents or whatever, um, for a period of time, you should be able to find them there. Great. Thanks so much for showing that, Eva. There's, again, so much information that people can use um, and so helpful. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> Interrupting each other. The only thing I was going to say is that if you know that your family went through the UK, it is a matter of just exploring it and uh, putting different filters on, trying variety of spelling, um, because sometimes people's names were truncated or changed, anglicized. So um but it's a pretty powerful archive it's just that i find that it, it's a bit a little bit clunky to use uh, but all the information's there yeah and there's lots of it so that's always good uh, just a reminder to everyone to please check out our social media as we upload lots of information weekly about european citizenship thanks so much eva
Thanks, Stephanie.